In this segment, we're going to talk about how language modeling can actually be used to improve word embeddings for other NLP tasks. So in particular, we're going to talk about a technique called ELMO, embeddings from language models. But to start with, we're going to talk about the idea of context-dependent embeddings and why we might want to do something different than we were in the word-to-vec paradigm. So the, in these two sentences here, they dance at balls and they hit the balls, we have two different word senses of balls, right? Somewhere that you dance versus something, so like the kind of round object. And in a word-to-vec style word embedding, we'll only keep track of one vector for balls. People have explored various ways of uh, splitting things out by word senses, but a lot of these techniques don't really scale and don't necessarily work that well. Instead, what we'd like to be able to do is say that the representation of ball really should be informed by its context. And so this happens naturally if you take word embeddings from something like glove and feed them into a bio STM or a convolutional neural network or something like that, but we could do better. So in particular, what we're going to explore and what a lot of uh, NLP now has converged on doing is training a neural language model to predict the next word given the words in the sentence following the LM framework we've discussed so far, and we're going to use the internal representations of this model as word vectors. So that looks like this, and so we're going to take these vectors at the top here as the word representations for balls. We're not going to try to think about producing a single out-of-context word vector that could go in like a big dictionary. So, Language models of both the form that we've seen so far and also a new type called masked language models, which we'll get to later in the course, allow us to form really useful word representations uh, that are going to allow us to upgrade the capabilities of our word-to-vec style models pretty significantly. And so this is the idea behind ELMO, uh, which came out in 2018. So they used a fairly sophisticated uh, language modeling architecture where they had uh, a bunch of words as input, like John visited Madagascar, uh, and used a character level CNN to help produce embeddings for each particular word here. These were then fed through uh, some feed forward layers and into a pretty big recurrent neural network. So these were 4096 dimensional LSTMs, uh, where between each cell of the LSTM, the 4096 dimensional vector is projected down uh, to 512 dimensions when you, uh, you kind of go to the next layer. So uh, internally, the cells in hidden states are 4096, but uh, everything kind of external is 512. So this whole big architecture is trained in the way that we've seen to predict the next word. And then what they did is say, okay, if we want to get the representation of the word visited, one way to do that is by looking at these uh, vectors that I've circled here, the CNN vector, and then also the states of the LSTMs after it's seen the word visited. So this is gonna be the internal state of the model as it's just seen that word and is trying to predict following words. And then you also do the whole process in reverse as well. So you're going to have the forward LSTM and then a backward LSTM that uh, produces the same sorts of representations. And you take all of those vectors and call that your representation for visited, which now depends on the context. All right, so what do we do with this? So this is a neural language model, and so it can be trained on a large amount of basically unlabeled data, where if we just have a bunch of text, we can learn to predict the next word given all the words that came before. So we could take the representations that come out of this and feed them into other neural networks and then do what we, whatever kind of downstream task we actually want to do, whether that's sentiment or machine translation or whatever. So the, there are two ways of doing this. Uh, the first is to treat these as so-called frozen embeddings, where uh, if we want to learn a neural net for sentiment, we backpropagate through that top neural network here, but we stop when we get to uh, ELMO, and we don't backpropagate into those representations at all. So this is similar to how we were thinking about GloVe, where uh, maybe you might keep the GloVe representations fixed and not update them during training. Um, you can also backpropagate through the entire thing, so you could treat ELMO as a kind of pre-trained representation. 
this is a BIOS TM that's been trained on all this data. Uh, we're going to update it now, but uh, you know, the, it, ideally it's been initialized in a very good place by virtue of the language model training. All right, and so when this paper came out, it made a huge splash because the results in it were incredible. On several different benchmark data sets, the model achieved results that were either an increase over the state of the art or comparable to the state of the art with much, much less engineering. Uh, so for example, in semantic role labeling, SRL here, uh, ELMO increased the state of the art by roughly three points from 81.7 to 84.6. Uh, similar story in COREF, and these were tasks that people had been working on for, at this point, decades, and a, a, a three-point improvement is fairly hard to achieve. Uh, and then in some others, like, uh, for example, the Stanford Sentiment Tree Bank at the end, you know, people had come up with all sorts of ad hoc architectures for modeling this, and ELMO was able to make a very, very simple model do as well as any of that stuff. So in terms of how to use it, uh, there was some follow-on work uh, that compared basically the idea of keeping these representations frozen versus actually fine-tuning them during learning. And what they found out was that for ELMO, uh, it was better to keep things frozen. And, you know, we can go into the reasons for this later in the course, but uh, one of the big differences between ELMO and BERT, which is uh, a mass language modeling-based pre-trained model, uh, is that in BERT, Fine-tuning actually works significantly better, and you don't want to keep the frozen, rec uh, frozen uh, embeddings. All right, so I'll just try to give a little bit of a sense of why this works. Uh, of course, we'll revisit this when we talk about mass language modeling as well. The language modeling is a kind of impossible problem, as we've discussed. You are trying to predict the next word, but there's so many possible words that could come after uh, a prefix of a sentence that uh, you know, we, we have no way of actually knowing which one it is. But it seems like as we throw bigger and bigger models at this task, we just get better and better at it and we still haven't really hit an upper limit. So the, this, is, this kind of combines with the fact that actually predicting the next word is a pretty interesting problem that requires modeling lots of effects in text. So for example, we have an, ex uh, an example here from the Lombada data set um, and it's this whole long setup, and after my dear mother passed away 10 years ago, I became blank. And the actual next word here is lonely. And in order to predict that next word as accurately as possible, a model really needs to be able to consume this context uh, and kind of reason about what's going on. And, and in fact, you can almost see this as a sort of sentiment analysis problem, right? Like what sentiment would this person have after these events? And surprisingly, language modeling works better than a lot of other techniques uh, that, that might be viewed similarly, like autoencoders. So language modeling really seems to be special in terms of how it allows us to learn representations for these different tasks. So ELMO is this generally useful component that you can plug into almost anything that you do. Uh, we're not going to explore it explicitly too much in this class because uh, future models like BERT and GPT outperform it, but uh, it's a nice connection between language modeling and this, these, this idea of pre-trained models that is going to enable us to build really powerful systems. And that's the end of this segment.